The AirSond is, uh, is nearing 300,000 hours of operational maturity right now under contract with our United States Navy, United States Air Force, United States Marine Corps through something called a contractor-owned, contractor-operated services. So since 2012, we've been on various contracts, now three different contracts with services operating the aircraft, maintaining the aircraft, and, and basically selling the capability or the, the, the services to our, to our military services. And so in that capacity, we've been able to grow Arison, mature Arison, uh, with all of those hours, adding different payload capabilities, understanding what our various customers and their emerging requirements are, and it's allowed us to keep pace with, uh, with those emerging requirements and mature Arison to a place where it's multi-mission capable, carrying lots of different payloads, doing lots of different things for our customers. And uh, the Arison's been deployed with the U.S. Navy recently, is that correct? Yes, it is uh, uh, one of those contractor-owned, contractor-operated uh, contracts is with the United States Navy, Naval Air Command, Naval Air Systems Command out of Patuxent River, Maryland. Um, and again, through that contract, we are able to win services contracts for both land-based operations with the Arisand, as well as shipboard operations with the Arisand. And so most recently, we've been able to, working with the Navy, in this case it was the United States Navy 4th Fleet and SOUTHCOM, to go out with, uh, under contract to the Navy, to go out on the Southern Seas operation, which left Little Creek, Virginia, on board the USS Gunston Hall, an LSD uh, ship. Uh, and we're going out on a three-month patrol with that ship participating in various operations with that ship's captain and the fleet um, and we'll be doing that for three months. And uh, what are the unique capabilities about the Aerosond in your opinion? So again, much of the maturity that we built into Aerosond has enabled us to put the open architecture into Aerosond to be able to switch payloads very quickly based upon what the customers uh, operational requirements are that day. So in a single sortie with the Arisand, we can carry multiple payloads. We can carry electronic warfare payloads, we can carry communications relay payloads, automatic identification system, always carrying an electro-optic day-night camera as well, and operating all of those simultaneously for our customer. I would say another unique uh, uh, capability that Arison provides is a very small footprint on board a ship. Uh, you know, many ships with which we operate are extremely small and you have to share the flight deck with a, with a helicopter. And so they don't, the, our customers tend not to want you to, as they call it, foul up the ship deck with a lot of equipment that otherwise would make helicopter operations very difficult. We have a single launch and recovery system with the Arison, it's a catapult launch system that converts itself to a net in which we land. Um, and we're always looking at new ways to make Arison and Arison systems even more uh, expeditionary and with a smaller footprint. And one of those is what we see behind us right now. Yes, I note you're exhibiting a hybrid variant of the Arison SUAS. How does this differ from the standard model? Right, and so in continuing to evolve Arison to not just shipboard missions, but also land-based missions, where our customers need us to be extremely mobile, adaptable, expeditionary, we've developed a Arison hybrid quad version, which within five minutes, a crew can convert a standard Arison into an Arison hybrid quad version. We have feature codes specific to the hybrid quad within our autopilot, which enable us to set a transition altitude. Um, and really, that's the only difference in operation between a standard Arisand and a hybrid quad version in terms of how the operator interfaces with the aircraft. You set a transition altitude, say that's 100 feet. The aircraft lifts off uh, vertically and transitions to normal flight at 100 feet, and then it's flying as it 
normally flies and comes back and does that uh, to land. And, uh, and that enables us to not even have a launch and recovery system on the ship. It enables us not to have to trail one if we're operating uh, mob with a mobile platform where we can move our hub and spoke around. Um, you just become that much smaller in operations and, and uh, it enables us to operate from extremely small marine craft. Dave Phillips, thank you for talking to us. Thank, thank you. you very much.